641 here on a Wednesday morning. It is time once again for our Morning Cup of Joe segment. We are joined live by Metro Sheriff Joe Lombardo. Sheriff, good to see you once again. Thanks for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Good morning, John. It's good to see you're in the studio. I know. Somehow they let me back in for a change. Uh, let's talk there about the, the, the news of the day, the news of the last couple of weeks. Uh, we saw the riot on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. last week. Uh, the Las Vegas Sun reported yesterday that Metro Police was uh, investigating whether officers from here in, in Las Vegas were over in Washington during that event. Uh, can you talk about the investigation and what's being done at a department level to look into this? Yeah, I think it's a similar uh, proactive step that all the police departments across the nation are taking because uh, I think it's important for us in law enforcement to have that sense of objectivity. And, you know, people have their First Amendment right to do what they want to do, but in that case, uh, it went beyond that. And so I think it would be troublesome for an individual to be part of the law enforcement community knowing that they entered the Capitol and did the uh, insurrection is the word being used today. Um, and it's important for us to uh, identify an individual if they did that and do whatever we can to remove them from the law enforcement community. Um, it, 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 I support what, they, what people want to do, uh, but obviously in this case it just went beyond um, desire to protest versus uh, becoming a riot. Are, are you aware of any officers that did uh, go into the Capitol? Uh, as of today, no. Okay. Um, but we're working hand in hand with the FBI, and we're going through all the videos and relying on people to call in if they know. Um, and we'll do um, an intensive follow up if, in fact, we do identify somebody. Kind of jumping off of that, we heard from uh, federal authorities that they're prepared for possible uh, large demonstrations on Inauguration Day in state capitals. Obviously, that's up in Carson City. But uh, what is Metro doing uh, just to prepare uh, here in southern Nevada for what might happen next week? Yeah, you know, and, and it's unfortunate that we're already prepared for these type of incidents, um, you know, in, during the summertime with the uh, protests associated with George Floyd and, and everything else in the, we've been dealing with in society in the last few months uh, to include COVID. Um, and what I mean by that, unfortunately, we've had plenty of practice um, with the people out protesting, doing their First Amendment rights and everything else that goes along with it. But in this case, um, there was a warning. Um, obviously, the president said what he said. Um, and individuals weren't prepared, uh, and that's my opinion. I believe law enforcement was ill-prepared to deal with the situation that took place. And so now we have a warning. We, we're aware that there may be insurrection uh, occurring here on the 20th, and we're putting people in place and plans in place to, to address it accordingly. And so after that event in D.C., in proximity and during that event, in D.C., we did deploy uh, troops here to the local courthouse, federal courthouse, and the state capitol. Um, so we've had sufficient warning associated with it, and it's a failure of leadership if we do not respond to that warning. And I believe that's what happened in Washington, D.C. Um, Sheriff, let's switch gears quickly uh, to coronavirus vaccines. You and I have talked before about the effect of COVID on the department uh, from top to bottom. Uh, will you require officers to get a vaccination and get immunized? Um, well, first and foremost, uh, thank you for asking the question um, because there is always a concern with your first responders uh, becoming victims of the virus. Uh, so to just to put it in perspective, I've had a, over a thousand employees to date uh, since March of last year um, that have come back positive for COVID. Uh, so we're dealing with that as a workforce and a labor issue and all the contact tracing that goes along with it and, and people gone on a daily basis and doing what we're paid to do in fighting crime. So moving forward, the vaccine's available. Uh, they made it in us in the first tier um, as far as going to get the initial shot and then subsequently the second shot. So it is, it's voluntary. Um, I guess that's the core of your question. It's voluntary at this point because of collective bargaining and everything else that you could imagine. But um, up until the vaccine be was available, it was presumptive that you, if you were positive, you received it at work and we took care of your time off. And now as we move forward with the vaccine being available, it's no longer presumptive. And so we're encouraging our uh, employees to go get the vaccine 
um, so we can ensure that we continue to be a, a viable and robust workforce. Um, so it's a three-phase attempt for us, uh, the first responders, um, the office, commission officers, and the co uh, corrections officers in the jail are first to go. And then it's the follow-up of the rest of the police officers in the second phase, and the third phase will be our civilian employees. And we have a suspense date of April 1st for the second shot to be completed. Okay, so it's, uh, it's encouraged but not required just because of collective bargaining. Uh, I think we have time right. to quickly sneak in a quick question about DUI crashes in the Valley. We've seen some relatively high-profile ones. Uh, can you just talk quickly about the effort to fight the issue here as we start the new year? Have things been improving recently since the holidays? Well, um, since the holidays, uh, no. Um, it's actually been had, we've had a significant increase in fatal accidents associated with uh, DUI in the first month of the year of, of the calendar year. Um, but if you look at compared to 19 versus 20 of last year, uh, we had a 11% decrease in fatal accidents associated with DUI. Uh, so that's positive, um, but we're experiencing a significant increase here in the first month. Um, more people are driving, people are getting back to work. Um, no matter how many times we preach it, you know, DUI is bad and you have all the options of Uber and Lyft and everything else, um, it seems to still be happening, which is troublesome to me personally and for the community. Um, so we have to continue to fight the fight and educate people and do uh, enforcement whenever possible to try to curb the, this particular issue. All right. Well, Sheriff, we certainly will keep an eye on that. We appreciate you joining us this morning and answering our questions. Take care, and we'll catch up with you later. If you have a question for Sheriff Lombardo, you can always submit it online. Just head to 8newsnow.com. You can find out if your question is answered every Wednesday.